again everybody and welcome back to Fuji's Blitz and we're back to the history lessons and this one is being ready to go for quite a long time. We're now looking at the history of the IS-7 or better known as the Object 260, the Russian heavy tank. This tank is in the game and we have it in Blitz as a tier 10 Russian super heavy and there it is there in all its glory. Now in the game this tank has a bit of a mixed bag. Some people love it, some people loathe it. Some people think it's now undergunned or underperforming in, in insofar as the IS-4 is slightly better armor-wise. But what is it about this tank? Well we're going to look at the real thing. And it had surprising origins. It started with this tank, the KV-13. Again a tank we have in the game. And you will find it at tier 7, it's a Russian heavy tank and it's a collector. In real life this was a, um, an experimental prototype, only three of them were ever built and it was meant to replace the T-3485 and progress from the KV-1S. They only ever built three of them, there's a picture of one of the experimental prototypes. Uh, it was a good tank but they decided to upgrade it even further and they, this led to what is called the KV-85 or to give it its proper designation, Object 239. Now, the Object 239 KV-85 was basically the KV-1S chassis with a brand new turret planted on top. And the turret came from the Object 237, which was still in development and was not finalized. The KV-85 actually did see action. There is one there captured by German forces in World War II. We don't have as such the KV-85 in the game. However, the KV-85 changed to the IS-85, which in turn morphed into the IS-1, which we do have in the game called the IS. And this was just a prototype tank, funnily enough, and there's a picture of the prototype of the IS-1, Object 237, IS-85, whichever you want to call it. The thing about the IS-1 is that it morphed even further in around 1943 because they put a bigger gun on it and it was then designated the IS-122 which we know and love in the game as the IS-2. This is the version 1945. Um, it's a Russian tier 7 heavy tank and it's a premium tank. It's basically the IS tank or the IS-1 with a bigger gun. In fact, it's got a 122mm gun, which is why it was originally designated the IS-122. But they changed the name from IS-122 because of security reasons and just redesignated it the IS-2. And lots of these were built and it saw lots of action during the war. They continued to be used by the Soviet Union after the war, finally being replaced by the T-54, T-55 and the T-62 with the remaining IS-2s placed into storage in the late, in the early 1960s. However, the Chinese did uh, reverse engineer the IS-2 and develop their own IS-2 which we do have in the game but that tank was eventually dropped in favour of the Type 59 which again we also have in the game. The thing about the Russians is they carried on tinkering with the IS-2 and they came up with this, the IS-3. We have this in the game, in the tech tree. This is a Russian Tier 8 heavy tank. Now the thing is, there are two tanks that were called the IS-3 in real life. There was what is effectively known in real terms as the Object 244, which is basically an IS-2 with an 85mm gun, which is also designated the IS-3. And then there's this tank, the IS-3, or more correctly known as the Object 703, which is the one that we have in the game. And this is actually the Kabinka Gate Guard at the Kabinka Tank Museum in Russia. This tank was developed in very late 1944, so it actually didn't come into action during the war, unfortunately. It was, however, seen at a parade in Charlottenburg in Berlin at the end of the war, like a Victory Day parade. And this tank was extremely successful. And there's another picture of an IS-3 in Kubinka, this time within the tank museum itself. This is really the daddy of the later IS series. And it, basically, they took the IS-2, they re-engineered the hull, and they re-engineered the turrets. So it resembles an upturned soup bowl. 
And it, it actually went on, and that turret, that low-lying turret, went on to be developed into what we now know and love as the, the T-55 onward series. The thing was, whilst this tank was very successful, in fact it saw a lot of action, especially in the Six Day War and things like that, the Russians still weren't overly happy and they decided to tinker even further. And this is where the family tree of the IS series gets a little bit out of sync and complicated. The IS-3 actually morphed into the next tank, which is the IS-4. Which again we have in the game, it's a tier 10 heavy tank and it's in the tech tree. Now, there were two IS-4s, just like there were two IS-3s. And there was the Object 245, which was again an IS-2 that had be re-armoured and had a different gun. And then there was this tank, which was effectively known as the Object 701 which we know in the game is the IS-4. Now you may think that I'm skipping a few tanks, but we'll get to that later. The IS-4 did exist, in fact it was a prototype tank, there's one there, that's the IS-4, also known as the Object 701, in the Kubinka Tank Museum in Russia. The thing about the IS-4, it actually started production in 1943, well, development. Production began in 1946, and it is a progression from the IS-2 and IS-3. The thing was, this tank was very sluggish in its mobility, and because of the decreased need for these type of tanks in favour of the IS-3, many of them were sent to the Far East along the Chinese border, and they became basically pillboxes. The irony is, there's only about 250 of these tanks actually built. They weren't particularly great, and they were eventually retired in the 1960s. So, you know, you, you may think I'm jumping the tanks, but actually I'm not. This one actually did develop along from the IS-2, IS-3. And this is where it gets confusing, because we now have to go sort of backwards in the game to this tank, the IS-5. Now, the IS-5 did exist purely as a prototype and a designation um, of a tank called the Object 730. And it was basically where they tinkered with the IS-3. This was not a very successful tank. In fact, it was a complete and utter failure. And you know, whilst the Russians did design it, it never really went much further than a prototype. In fact, there is one there. And that is the only picture I can find of the Object 730 or IS-5. Now, this tank was a complete and utter failure. In fact, it was absolutely awful. And if, if you know me, then you'll know that in the game, I really don't like this tank either. And you know what? It actually reflects what the tank is like in real life. And it was ill-fated. Only a, a handful were built, and it led to the next tank, which is that of the IS-6. This is another tank we have in the game. It's again a Tier 8 and it is a heavy tank and it's a premium tank and this tank really did exist in real life it was actually designated initially as the object 253 which was basically a tank with electric transmission but that tank was absolutely horrendous so they then developed it into what is called the object 252 which was effectively similar to the 253 the only difference being is that whilst it shared the same hull in turret, it had a different suspension system with no return rollers and a conventional mechanical transmission system. The thing was, they, when they tested it, this design offered absolutely no advantages over the IS-2 at all. Well, I say at all. But it did have an advantage in that the reload time was a lot less. So eventually the IS-6 project was cancelled. And they went back to the drawing board with the IS-3 and came up with this, the IS-7. This is a tier 10 Russian heavy tank. And it gets a bit confusing again now. So this is the IS-7, or more effectively known as the Object 260. Now, being a tier 10 alongside the IS-4, you would think that this is one of the final versions of the IS family. Actually, it's not, and we'll get to the final version shortly. So, the IS-7 realistically doesn't belong, oddly enough, at tier 8. Yet, this is the development history of a tier 10 tank, namely the IS-7. So, you may think, well, you've forgotten a couple of tanks or something, but we'll get back to that. So the IS-7 itself was 
basically a, a, a development of the IS-3 following the failures of the IS-5 and the IS-6. It began to be designed in 1945 with a full-scale mock-up being produced. They ran through the tests because it was ready with the prototypes in 1946 and the test finished in 1948 when they had a finalized design. It was crazy. I mean, the final design was armed with a stabilized 130mm cannon fed by an autoloader and eight machine guns and the armor was pretty massive, 300mm and it was the largest tank that the Soviet Union ever or would ever produce. It was colossal. However, it really did have some significant flaws, the biggest of which relates to its weight. I mean, this thing was pushing 68 tons, and the Russians felt that because of its weight, which was colossal, it really couldn't be transported anywhere. It, they couldn't put it on rail transport, um, they couldn't take it over bridges, and it would sink into marshy land. And in fact, in, you know, no Soviet tank entered service after the IS-7 that exceeded 55 tons, funnily enough. So the project was dropped quite early on. Only six prototypes were ever produced. But this wasn't the last member of the IS family. That belongs to a Tier 9 tank, which is the IS-8, which, as I said, we have in the game as a Tier 9 tank. No. This is an interesting one because this tank was actually developed after the IS-7 and IS-4 series, oddly enough. Yet, this tank in the game comes before in the tech tree, the IS-4 and the IS-7. And, and basically, the failures of the IS-5 and the IS-6, whilst sort of taking them back to the IS-7, led to a different tank called the T-10. And this is the T-10, funnily enough. We call it the IS-8 in the game. It was actually designated both the IS-8, the IS-9, the IS-10, and the T-10. Production on this tank realistically came, as I said, after the production of the IS-7. And it basically took what it learned from the IS-5 and the IS-6 and it brought into this concept. But the thing was, Stalin died and with what was going on in the political climate, they dropped the IS moniker, renamed it the T-10, and then they found that actually we don't need such a heavy tank. Um, and they started to replace it by the T-55 and the T-72s and T-60s, etc, etc. So this tank really never got off the ground. 1,439 were built, and it had a weight of 52 tons, considerably lighter than the IS-7. It's ironic that this tank sits at Tier 9, yet it is seen in real terms as a more superior tank than the IS-7 and IS-4, oddly enough. But this is the way games are developed, I guess. So we have this sort of disjointed history of the IS family. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been the history of the IS-7, which doesn't, whilst the game tech tree follows a sort of pattern, it doesn't mirror real life, I'm afraid, with the IS-8 being the final version. It's a nice tank, the IS-7. It's an interesting tank. And, you know, these were the last tanks of the heavy tank series that the Russians were developing. After these tanks, the Russians would go to fast, medium tanks, not light tanks. They would go to a medium roll tank and they would drop heavy tanks altogether after the IS-8. So... I hope that's been enjoyable. I hope that's given you a bit of an understanding of the development history and how we get to the IS-7. By all means, comment and like and all the other stuff below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do, because it's a nice thing to do. It puts a smile on my face. By all means, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other jazz. And if you really want to, you can also support me in Patreon. Uh, Anyway, as I said, I've been Fujit. That has been the history of the IS-7. I hope that's been enlightening. 
And until the next time, guys, I will say my usual stuff. Stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking, because, you know, that's what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.